everyone and welcome to part 3 of the 1840s dress series. Today's part is going to be about the petticoat. Before we get started however, please click on my logo down there to subscribe as I'm currently trying to get my channel to 500 subscribers before March 31st and I would be really grateful for your support. Now let's get started. So now I've stitched about 3 meters of fabric into a ruffle, I'm now going to hem. I've decided not to sew these 3 meters by hand, the hem that is, but instead I'm going to use a machine blind stitch. So according to the instructions of the sewing machine, I'm going to fold up the hem, which is going to be a rolled hem like this. And then I'll just... So now I've pinned in place part of the hem. This is what it looks like on the outside for now. But after I've sewn it, it will just um, fold over inwards like this. And hopefully it will no longer be seen. So I've selected a blind stitch for firm fabrics. The hem didn't turn out quite as well as I expected, as at times there were quite large stitches to be seen. But after all, it saved me nearly an hour's sewing if I had done it by hand. So I'm going to leave it there and concentrate on the tucks in the skirt itself. So, so I'm going to use my ruler and a lot of pins and I'll just fold the fabric over my ruler and insert a pin on the other side. This is basically all that I'm going to do for the next 10 minutes or so. So you guys will be seeing this in fast forward. So now I've pinned all the pleats in place and next I'm going to sew them down. But before you do that you always want to make sure that the waistband 
or the waistline fits approximately at least. Mine is just a tad too wide, but I will be able to adjust that later. I will be attaching a wide ribbon at the top, which I can tie, so I'm not going to worry about my waistband being too wide. Now I'm just pinning the ruffle to the bottom edge of the petticoat. As the petticoat is a little bit too long, which is not too bad actually as I will be wanting to use that petticoat even when I grow taller, I'll just fold it over with a nice bit of fabric allowance here and then I'll just straight stitch over that line here so when the petticoat is done you will be having the front side here with a nice and attached ruffle. So this is basically working just like a big waistband. I'm folding under the raw edge and then I'll just fold that whole thing over the edge of the ruffle. As this polyester fabric does fray quite a bit, this is a proof for that, it's also quite handy that I will be hiding the raw edges as I would, I'm afraid there would be some really bad damage done if I didn't. Another good point is that I will also not be able to um, push away the ruffles, which often happens when you machine over a gathered bit that's not secured and if you don't have a walking foot. I guess with a walking foot it would be just easy, but I don't have one. so. When I'm just covering up the ruffled edge, it's kind of squashed between the two other layers of fabric and hopefully it won't move. Back at the machine I'm now going to sew that in place. I'm going to use a zigzag stitch to prevent the fraying from getting out of hand and I'm going to use quite a large one actually so I'll just go off And here you can see the finished petticoat worn over my corded petticoat and corset. So that's it for this video and keep tuned for part 4.